Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can upload your own files for the chatbot to generate answers form. And this is outside the realm of SharePoint because I already covered that in the video last week. But just in case you're confused, let's take a look at a demo. So here is my chatbot and in my topics I have the out of the box 7 topics. I did not add any new one. Next I go to my AI capability settings and there I have uploaded up to 13 different files. And finally, I was able to have a conversation with the chatbot asking a very specific question and the bot referenced the documents that I uploaded using the conversational boosting topic. And so this video is specifically for your scenarios where you already have the data in your file sitting on your local machine and you couldn't care less if it was already on SharePoint or OneDrive or Dataverse, you just want the chatbot to reference it. And that is why this video is important for those scenarios. So stick around, but first, here's my intro video. So here's the Microsoft documentation that gives us information about the Power Virtual Agents NLU or Natural Language Understanding functionality that is available. A couple of things I want you to keep in mind is that it is under preview, so definitely get yourself familiar with it, start playing with it, but wait until you go production on this one. Um, and as I scroll down over here, you see that you've got the options to go ahead and actually upload a whole bunch of documentations. It does get stored in Dataverse, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but here's what caught my interest, was the supported document types. Now, in the previous week, I actually showed you how you can go ahead and do that into SharePoint. And over there, there were some limitations of the document types that you could put in. But over here, you've got a really wide range of documents and the extension types. So take a look at this. Some of these things will really catch your interest. But now that you've seen all of this, let's go and actually build a chatbot directly from scratch. So I'm gonna switch over to my chatbot over here and let's create a new chatbot. I'm going to call this as AMA bot, which stands for Ask Me Anything Bot. Um, I'll leave all the other default settings as is, and I'll go and click on Create. Uh, I really love this little animation that comes in because it's actually going ahead and building our bot. So once this is done, we'll go ahead and now start leveraging this new feature and functionality. Keep in mind, no new topic will be created. That's the fun part. So the bot creation is done. I'm just gonna go ahead and close off this little animation window that comes in. And on the left side, you will see that there is topics. And these are the seven out of the box topics that are already created. And the key, key thing I wanna emphasize on is that we're just gonna upload documents. I do not have to create a single topic for this functionality to work. So let's take a look at our settings, go all the way to the bottom to the AI capabilities, and over here is where we go ahead and now upload the documents. Now, key thing it says is that the documents files can only be up to seven meg, all right? And it keeps that in mind, it's actually checking. So as a test, I'm gonna go ahead and come and click on the browser section over here, and I'm gonna go to my documents, uh, I'll go to my test files, and these are all the files that I wanna go and upload. It's a combination, it's actually got Word, it's actually got Excel, a bunch of them. Now, keep in mind this one, it's called PNL Summary. It's over four meg. Remember, the limit over here is three meg. So I'm gonna still try to behave that I completely ignored this limit and see what happens. Uh, so I'll just select on the top, and then I'll hold my shift button down, go all the way to the bottom, select that, and I'm gonna click on open. This is just to show you that you can actually upload in bulk. And right over here, it says PNL summary exceeded the file size limit, so it's not gonna go and upload those. And if I scroll down, if I do a quick count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, go down, eight, nine, 10, 11, and there you go. There's actually 11 documents that have been uploaded. Now keep that number in the back of your mind because it's gonna be useful. So we've got the documents uploaded, but there's one additional setting change that you have to do. Go up to the top and right over here under the Boost Conversational Coverage and Generative Answers, select this checkbox. Because now we are telling the chatbot that you should go ahead and start leveraging this, all right? So I'm gonna go and do that. Everything else looks good. I don't need to put any websites or anything like that. All of it is good. Just make sure you go up to the top and you click on save. The changes have been saved, which is good. So now I'll just go back to my topics. And for the sake of this test, I wanna to toggle on the track between topics because it's very interesting to see how this is all going to work and from which topic it is gonna to jump to. Remember, once again, 
I did not create a new topic for this. These are the seven out of the box ones. We'll take a look at the nine system in just a second. Uh, so I'm gonna come to the bottom over here for the test bot and I'm gonna start my conversation by just saying hi. All right, I go ahead and actually automatically switch over to this greetings topic. Um, and now I'm gonna ask a very specific question. Uh, the question I'm gonna say is electronics store trends. All right, it's just the text that I put in. I'm gonna go ahead and hit on enter. And so now it is going to start searching it through. And it will also reference the documents that we uploaded. And right here, it says that the current trends in electronic stores include, and by the way, this nice clean formatting did that out of the box. I really love this auto formatting that it does in a really professional manner. But, but let's not stop over here. It is telling me that this is coming from a citation and it gives me a link. So if I click on the link, a pop-up comes in and it's very specifically telling me from which uploaded document or file did this come from. So here is actually the file name, electronics store trends in international markets dot PPTX. PPTX is a PowerPoint. So that's a really good example of showing that it works with different file types. And if you toggle over to the other tab, once again, you can see that these are all the supported document types that it handles, including our PPTX, which is PowerPoint document. But, but let's not just stop over here. I'm gonna go ahead and ask another question. It's gonna be about recent product line. Just go ahead and hit enter. Again, it is going to go ahead and search through everything and it comes back with a recommendation. Here you go. The recent product line of Contoso Electronics has seen a dramatic rise in both online and retail stores. In the referencing, it gives me a citation. Click on that, a pop-up comes in and it's directly telling me where or which document it is coming from. So there is something called as Contoso Electronics to open Miami store dot doc X, which is basically a Word document. And the pop-up comes over here. So this is a good point for me to tell you a very important thing, is that be careful of the documents that you go ahead and upload directly into your AI capability. So right over there in this AI capabilities, these were all the documents that you uploaded. Make sure that all the documents that you put over here, its content is something that you are allowed to share because all of this content basically becomes a free for all. Anytime somebody comes and does a search, if the generative AI is able to go ahead and find an answer over here, it is just gonna display the data. Remember, the AI in this case, the generative AI, doesn't really know how to decipher the right and the wrong. That is up to you. You uploaded the document over here and therefore it is gonna reference all the content in this document. Keep that in mind. Also, just watch out for duplicates. If you might have a couple of file names that are the exact same, it does confuse the bot. So kind of be a little smart on that thing is upload the documents with different file names. Obviously, it will completely go and get rendered. So all the information inside the content is actually the one that is displayed. But having similar file names can cause a little bit of confusion. Also, from the time you go ahead and actually upload the documents and turn on the use generative answers, it can take a few minutes till it starts to reference that documents. So you go ahead and upload the document and you come and start doing a search over here. Initially, you might actually get some messages that it can't find the content, but just give it a few minutes. I would you know, say anywhere from five to 15 minutes. Once it is ready, you start getting answers just like that. And that's just a one-time thing. It's not that after that, every single time you fire up the bot, it needs that extra time. No, it's just a one-time thing. But, but here's the interesting thing, all right? So I'm gonna just go and refresh this uh, because I want to figure out which topic this is coming from. So if I go and do another search over here for that recent product line, uh, it will go ahead and reference directly which topic it is coming from to give us this information. And this is the one. This is called as conversational boosting. So if I go back to my topics, you won't see it over here, you see it under system. And that's what it is, conversational boosting. So if you go back into the topic, you actually have full access to go ahead and edit this however you see fit. Now, be careful when you do that because once you change it and if you save it, it's going to affect all your other conversations. So kind of be careful over there. And in fact, if you really, really do wanna play with it, uh, before you do that, do me a favor, come back over here to your conversational boosting, select on the ellipses, and make a copy first so you don't lose the original one, all right? Uh, but when we go back to the conversational uh, boosting, interesting thing I see over here is the trigger. The trigger by default is something called as on unknown intent. And if I click on it, uh, there's really nothing else you can do. There's no additional properties. So this is for those scenarios where if the bot simply cannot find any existing topics related to the conversation that's going on, it directly comes into the conversational boosting and uses all of the settings that you've done, which in our case is just the documents that you uploaded. This is pretty awesome. 
So a follow-up thought that you might already have is, Daniel, where is all this documents being saved? And if you're already thinking from a Dataverse standpoint, that is correct. It is actually stored in Dataverse in that environment tied to this chatbot. It's actually a really interesting way to find that out. And to do that, we'll build a really quick Canvas app so I can show you the relationships of all the tables, specifically the ones where these documents are saved. So on the top left on the app launcher, let's go and click on that and I'm gonna go directly into my Power Automate. I don't see my Power Apps, that's fine. I'll go to my Power Automate, click on Power Platform, go to my Power Apps. And over here, we will actually go and create a very simple Canvas app just to pull some information in. Uh, if you're gonna try this in your own tenant, just make sure that you are in the exact same environment as where your chatbot is, all right? That's the key thing, you gotta be in that same environment. Uh, so I'll go and click on my apps. In my apps, I'll actually go and click on a new app. Uh, I'll go and start with page design. In my page design, I'll actually go ahead and pick, uh, say, this one over here. And um, in there, I need to go ahead and now making some connections to Dataverse tables, but it's important that you know which one they are. I'm gonna go and click on skip, and I'm gonna to go to our data, I'm gonna click on add data, and here, the first one that you wanna search for is called as chatbots. Uh, we will use the chatbots subcurrents anyway, but it's going to grab your chatbots, and in the chatbot, once it's done loading, we are going to go ahead and search for this AMA bot. Remember, that's the bot that we gave its name. So if I go in all the way outside also, this is the brand new one that we just created, all right? So AMA bot is the one that we're looking for. Uh, so in our left container, I'll click on the insert and I'll go ahead and drop this vertical gallery. Once the vertical gallery comes in, it's asking me, do you want chatbots? Yes, I want chatbots. And right off the bat there, that is the bot that I wanna go and select. Uh, what you can also do is actually clean this up a little bit. I'm not gonna get too excited about this, uh, but I do wanna do a little bit of cleanup. So the image on the tile, I'll just go and replace that with say directly these three images or these three texts. And over here, you can actually go ahead and change this over straight away to a concept straight away to something called as the to row ID unique, all right? Something that you could just be very interested on. So in this main container, I'm gonna go ahead and actually add another few layers. So I'll go ahead and now click on the insert. Under the layout, I'll go ahead and select this horizontal container because uh, I'm gonna actually put in another gallery and I'm gonna put a label over there. So it'll make more sense. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and play with that in just a minute. First thing I need to do is go ahead and get my other data source. Uh, so click on the add and over here, again, search for chatbot, but get the chatbot subcomponents. Go ahead and grab that right now because we're going to reference that. Um, then we'll go back again and I will actually make sure we're in the sub container. In the sub container, I'm going to click on insert uh, and go ahead and grab another vertical gallery. And then by default, it'll ask you, hey, which one of these do you want? So I'm going to click on the sub components one. Uh, you can keep this as is or you can go ahead and change the layout directly to title, body, and sub party, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, what I want to do is actually change the name a little bit. So this name that is coming in right now, this is the default setting. I'm gonna go ahead and change that one to the parent ID, to the parent bot ID, but after that click on, that, but after that click on a period or dot, and then go ahead and type in name. These are the names that we want. So now I'm actually gonna start filtering some of it. So these names that you see is the same name that you have for your bot names. That's the, you know, that's the relationship that we have to build. And then the next thing over here, I'm gonna go and change that as well. I'm gonna change that to the file. IntelliSense gives me file.data. I'm gonna click on period again, and there you go, file name. And right now you're seeing blank because a bunch of these sub chatbot components did not have file attachments. What we need is specifically the ones which had files in it. And for that, we need to go ahead and filter this gallery a little bit. So make sure you're selected on the gallery. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and actually now comment this one out and I'm gonna go and put in my filter. In my filter function, I'm gonna first reference the chatbot components because that's the one that we do all the filtering on. Comment, go ahead and get in its parent bot ID dot name. That's the name because remember, we went and already grabbed that. I'm gonna go ahead and now filter that based on the gallery one dot selected dot name and i don't want to stop over here because if i go and close it uh, yes it is actually showing me a bunch of things yes as you can see the bot names are all showing up this is great but as you can see over here some of the items that are coming in inside the chatbot sub components uh, gallery subcomponents dataverse table some of them have the attachments while the other ones don't so I just wanna bring in the ones that have the attachments. So check this out. I'm gonna go and put in this additional PowerFX formula by saying is blank file data dot 
but value equals false. I can do that. I'm going to close it. And now it's only going to go ahead and get in all the ones that I want to see. And I'll just go ahead and expand that a little bit. I'll make it flexible width. So in this case, we need to do all of that. That's great. Uh, but but inside that container, I'm going to go and click on the insert and I'll add a label. So it pushes that a little bit. And over here, I want to actually go ahead and do a count rows. So I'm going to say count rows of all the items that are in the gallery three. I'm going to say gallery three dot all items. Um, and we are going to go ahead and get a number 11. It's important that you see that because we are seeing the chatbot here all the files that are coming in, and then we are seeing the total number of files are 11. But you and I have one way to confirm if this number is correct. So if I go back now to our chat bot, in the chat bot, I go to settings, AI capabilities, scroll a little bit to the bottom, let's do a quick count, right? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, and then I'll scroll up, and then there's eight, nine, 10, 11, and nothing else scrolling. So as you can see, the 11 files were uploaded over here, we can actually go ahead and verify. So this is the interesting thing, that there is a table called chat bots, and that is where it stores all the chatbot information that you're doing. Second thing is there's another Dataverse table called chatbot subcomponents, and over there you can actually go in and see all the files that are coming in. Uh, these files, you basically just have to do a little interesting uh, filtering, but you're able to see all of these things. Now, there is another kind of easier way, but it doesn't give you all this information at this detail. But let me show you that anyway. I'm going to open up another tab and we're going to go ahead directly into Power Apps. Uh, make sure they do it in Power Apps. It's easier from the Power Apps side and make sure you're on the correct environment. And on the left side, I'm going to go and click on Tables. Just go to Tables, all right? And on the Tables on the top right in the search, I'm just going to do a search for Chatbot. That is all I'm doing. It is on Recommended by default. Switch over to All. And right over here, you see the two one, chatbot and chatbot component. So I'm gonna actually go and select that one. And over here, once it goes and populates everything, you should be able to find your chatbot. So right over here, here is the chatbot that we're looking for. Uh, so I'll go ahead and now duplicate this tab. And we'll go back to one more level on the left side, which is on the tables. Again, on the tables, we'll select all. On the top right, I'll go and search for chatbot. And in the chatbot, now we are selecting chatbot component. Um, over here, you will see all this information directly coming in. There's a bunch of it. Uh, right over here, it's actually telling me about the bot attachments types. You can actually go to the right side, make sure that you select all. So I'll go and select all of it and click on save. And then here you will be able to see that these are actually all the bot files that are coming in, which of them were there, what were the IDC, file data. It's actually got the paper clip, so you're able to go in and actually take a look at it. Keep in mind though, that you don't have to be too concerned that, hey, am I doing all of this? Is this gonna break my backend system of all these files and everything? No, you are not going to disrupt any of these tables because check this out, data in this table is read only. So you could even go ahead and get Uber level access to this environment. You just cannot manipulate this data because let's face it, this is important information for your bot and its attachment. So it's best that you don't have access to go and edit any of this. So I know I covered a lot in this video, but this is all good stuff to know. First of all, how we can actually go ahead and upload the files, any type of files types. Yeah, there is a limit of the three meg, but hey, the AI, which is the generative AI, can start referencing those files and pull that information in. Because remember, we didn't create a new topic, but that files took care of everything because there was the conversational boosting topic that took care of that. And then just for the fun sake, I even showed you where all these attachments are actually saved. And that really did increase your knowledge because now you know in the back end how the chatbot information is actually stored in Dataverse. And then it's got one table to show you all about the chatbots, but another table to even go ahead and save all of those attachments. So hopefully this video was useful to you. Hopefully you are getting all excited about the co-pilot and the conversational AI functionalities that are coming into Power Virtual Agents. And as always, keep building chatbots. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.